We're now ready to buff out the guitar body and the neck after wet sanding up to P5000 grit. But before we get into the buffing, I want to make some introductory comments about buffing and what we did prior in general. One of the reasons that we wet sanded up to P5000 grit was to make buffing go easier. Because in my opinion, buffing, whether you do it by hand or with a pedestal buffer, is one of the trickiest things to learn to do and to learn to do well. It also does require a little bit of an investment in materials. The other problem with buffing is there is a lot of information about different ways of doing it. For example, I've heard of people going from P800 right to a buffing wheel using a very coarse compound and then working up to the very fine compounds. I've also heard of people going up to only P1500, which is the way I used to do it, and then going to maybe like a medium or a coarse cut cleaner, then medium, and then fine, and then super fine, and so on. My system wet sands up to a pretty high grit because we want to make that whole system of buffing go as easy as possible. As I said previously, one of the scariest things for me at least is to hold a guitar body that's just about finished up next to a wheel that's spinning at about maybe 800 or 900 or 1000 RPM. There's also something to be considered about the type of finish. And this is something that you'll never hear or never get information about. And because of my background in coatings, I'm going to give you some information about why buffing certain finishes may be easy with certain types of grits, or it may be hard. So let's hop over into the spray booth onto my blackboard, because I want to tell you a little bit about thermoplastic versus thermo setting finishes. As I said in the beginning of this video, knowledge is power. And if you understand the differences between finish types, you'll be able to understand and solve problems that come up during the whole wet sanding and buffing process. The finishes that we use in guitar making can very broadly be grouped into two different types, thermoplastic finishes and thermo setting finishes. Thermo meaning heat, which comes to us from the Greek, plastic, which means moldable, and setting, which means a way of hardening. This is the way that finishes cure in one respect. Thermoplastic finishes are evaporative finishes like shellac and lacquer. Thermo setting finishes are catalytic cure type of finishes like varnish and two component urethane. But that's a subject for a different video. We're talking about finishes right now that are already cured, but whether they're thermoplastic or thermo setting cured finishes makes a big difference when we cure them. As I said, thermoplastic finishes are finishes like lacquer. Both water base and solvent base. Shellac is another one. And thermoplastic finishes, as defined by the term, will re-soften or get soft when heat is applied, thermo. So what that means is that you can soften shellac and lacquer a little bit by applying heat. Thermo setting finishes, on the other hand, are finishes like varnish, some water based finishes like Endurovar, and finishes like two component urethane and polyester. And these are ones that are typically used in guitar making. There's a lot of other ones, but we don't really run into them in guitar making. As I mentioned, this is important because when you buff a finish, particularly on a pedestal buffer, 
you will be creating heat. And if you want to know how much heat is created, you'd be surprised, and I'm going to show you in just a sec. But, for example, shellac, the softening point of shellac is right around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you hold shellac finishes up to a spinning buffing wheel long enough, you'll spin them right off because you get to that temperature quickly enough. Lacquer, nitrocellulose lacquer, although not quite as uh, low a softening point as shellac, still will get soft. And when you buff a lacquer finish, a nitrocellulose lacquer finish, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that it's going to be soft when you take it off the buffing wheel for a period of about 10 minutes until it cools down a bit and gets hard again. On the other hand, thermosetting finishes aren't reactivated or softened by the action of heat. Because they cure by a catalytic or a reactive process, they cross-link or become a very, very tight molecular structure and heat can't break down that cross-link and soften these finishes. So a fully cured varnish, two-component urethane and polyester don't really get soft by the, or they don't, they aren't re-softened by the action of buffing. And that makes a difference in things like the speed of your buffer, how long you can buff, and which type of compounds that you use. So remember, whether you use a thermoplastic or thermosetting finish, it's going to have a big effect on the way that you buff a finish. As I mentioned in some other previous sections, I've heard of people going straight from like P800 or maybe P1000 right to the buffing wheel using lacquer and shellac. And the reason that they can get away with that is because these finishes are thermoplastic. If you use one of these other finishes and try to take somebody's advice of going straight to a buffing wheel after P800, you ain't gonna do it. So that's one of the reasons that I like to wet sand as high as I can, because it ensures that you're gonna get a good gloss finish when you start buffing.